All right, today's training is on prop stream on how to find listed properties on the MLS that have been listed for a period of time and we want to contact them to see if uh, we can make a deal on them because they're probably motivated after, they've sat, after they have sat on the MLS or multiple listing service for multiple months. So we're going to start out here. Uh, we're going to start out, out here and um, let's do St. Charles County today. Something different. We always do in St. Louis. Let's do St. Charles County only. So when we click in the county here which we know at the top in the search bar, we can do county level, we can do city level, we can do um, uh, neighborhoods, I believe in here, and we could do zip codes. And we just had a specific zip code we wanted to do. Uh, we can do that. And I think we can even go all the way down to a street. But for today's training, we're gonna go county level. St. Charles County, Missouri is what our subject place is gonna be. We're gonna look at the MLS properties. 3,500 are on mm -hmm. the MLS properties over here. So these are properties that have either been, they're listed active, listed, um, they're either active, contingent, failed, pending, sold, or unknown. So when we click this filter button, as you see here, we can break down different parts within here. So this is just going over that. So the filter, we know it's MLS, and then we go straight to here to break down what we want to do within the MLS. So say we only want active properties. We can do failed properties, pending, sold, all this other stuff you see here. But today's training, we're doing active properties. We want to see who's active. Um, you can break down a listing amount. Say if we only want houses 300000 or less, we want to stay within a certain dollar amount. So that drops it down to under 600 properties. Um, as you see, as we add things over here on the left side, it drops the numbers on the right side as you change things over here. Listing date. Let's see, we want stuff that was listed. Let's see here. From January 1st to present. That's too far. So we want to say January 1st. Yeah, that's, that should be good. Yeah, so something that been, has been listed all the way from January to now today, and this is November, so this is 11 months in. So I, I don't know if that's right, but we're going to dig into it and see. 525 properties have been listed since January that are active right now, supposedly according to our search that we've already done. Um, property characteristics, if we want to do single family homes, condos, multifamily, land, or other, I'm just doing some single families. Let's break it down. So as you see here, before that was checked, it's 525. When we check off single family, that number should drop to 370, as you see here. And who's calling? I have to call her right back. They always call in my training. It's like they're watching me. So single family is what we're going to do. We can break down year built if we wanted to. We can do bedrooms, bathrooms, square footage if we want to. But I usually leave that stuff blank. So that's going to do it for property characteristics. Ownership info. We want to get individual owners. You can target corporate or LLC owners. So as you see, as, as we changed it, it went from 370 down to individual owners down to 315. So it dropped a few people off. Minimum years of ownership. So say uh, they have to have owned the house for five years or more. It drops it down to 73. You see what I'm saying? So the more things you add, the better. So, I mean, not necessarily the better, just the more specific you can be. So I don't, I'm not going to take that off. I was just doing it to show you what you can do on here. Um, the last sale date, the last sale price, you can even click off if it's an out-of-state owner. Look at that. 13 people out-of-state owner. Um, so I guess that would make it a non-owner occupied as well up here. Yes, yeah, so the same thing. So out-of-state owner. So this shows you this got a lot of different pain points almost. So not really pain points, but different indicators that they may be willing to sell or make a deal. So you see it's non-owner occupied. It's listed on the MLS. It's a single family. It's active right now. It's $300,000 or less. It was listed between January of this year to now. It's out-of-state owner and it's individual owner. Those are just some of the things. We can go deeper, but we already got a small list. We're going to work with this little list now. Um, foreclosure. Um, we're going to say none. Does that change it from 13 to anything? Yep, keeps it the same. So none. So it's none of these in pre-foreclosure. So we just push apply. But we can do more things in here to get more specific. But the list is so small already. It's only 13. So we don't really get need to get more specific. So that's a lot of things there to break that down. We click apply. It shows you all these houses here. So say this house here, number 29, David Drive. Let's see what's going on with him. He lives in Detroit, so in Michigan. He's not even out-of-state owner. We already know that because, remember, we already checked that off on our thing. If we can reach this, uh, probably the real estate agent is who we're going to reach with this one because it's listed active right now. 
we can make offers on ML listed properties, but we usually want to go through the agent. Sometimes we can go to the homeowner. You know, we try to go through the agent, but if we can't reach them, hey, I'll call the owner. Hey, what's going on? You still selling that house? They might say, reach my agent. Or they might say, yeah, I want to sell it. I'm fed up with my agent. I've had it listed since January of 2019 and it still hasn't sold. And there's only two reasons a house won't sell. The price is too high or the marketing sucks. And it's usually the price is too high. So um, for this house here, it says it's active. It shows the, the copy that they wrote on the MLS. Um, it shows some comps if we want to look up the comps to see um, what's going on with it. So let me go back. So right now this house is uh, listed for rent. See, I should have changed that on the thing. See, this is listed as a, a rental. This isn't listed as a sale. So I didn't change it on my thing. So let me go back. Let me X that out. See, that's another filter on here. So when you go to MLS status, you can put as rental. No. See, these filters make all the difference. So I'm going to add that to it now, which I could have done that from the beginning. But like I said, this is just for training. So this is active. These eight houses are in St. Charles County active. This is a big house here. Let's check this beautiful one out at the bottom for some reason. So let's see here. We know that Ratatang Tang owns this, however you say their name there. They live in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, non-owner occupied, out-of-state owner. We know that. And they're going to list it. They have listed it with a realtor on the MLS. Uh, we see it's active since uh, it was updated August 9th. Uh, the list price was two sixty nine nine. dollars um, we see they bought it back in 2011 for 183. So we don't know what's going on with this house. We can see pictures of it when it's MLS listed. It can show, you know, how beautiful the house is. Nice, big, double red French doors. This ain't even a house. What is this thing? It's a pool house. Look at that. You got a workout room or, and everything there. I don't know what this is. This may not even be. Yeah, this should be a single family because that's what I clicked off. Maybe this stuff that's in the neighborhood. So what a beautiful place this is. You want to live here? You'll have to pay that top dollar of $269,900. Fantastic home in the desirable 10 chimneys neighborhood needs a little TLC. See, that's another pain point. But uh, so if I was to look up this property here on another site, let's see if I was just to do a Google search and go to Zilla. Zilla. Shows it. Yeah, it's, is that even the same house? What the heck? Hold on, where are we at here? Wrong thing here. Uh, this house. 7491 Little Oaks. 74. Oh, they must have painted it. So that shows that was old pictures. This is the new updated pictures. That's why I always go to Zillow or something more. So this shows that it's been on for 152 days like or more, as we already know. It's listed with this agent. And uh, let's see here. So it shows the same thing, show more price history. Listed for sale back then, let's see, 2016. So this is when it was listed recently. So June 5th, listed for 283. Then they dropped the price. Then they dropped the price again. Then they dropped the price again. Then they dropped the price again. You see how the price is going down, 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 down? So we know they want 265 for it generally. But according to over here on PropStream, they only owe about 149. That's their mortgage balance. So we can make an offer anywhere, I would say, that or above. I mean, if, they, if somebody offered them 180, would they take it? I don't know. They might be ready to go. Do they have more into it, meaning they put more into it like they spent money on repairs? They may have spent forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 in repairs. I don't know that. I don't know anything other than what I see here. They owe about $149. they are trying to get two sixty five dollars or two sixty nine dollars on here, it says. Um, and we may be able to make an offer on it. It's been on market for 88 days. That's a long time. That's three months. If they're ready to sell, we don't know. We can make an offer. So we would have to uh, evaluate the deal first to see if it's even worth making an offer on it. Is it worth anything more than that? 149 plus fees? So I would think just looking at it, you know, they got a real estate agent, so that's going to account for about 6% of that sales price. The real estate agent going to eat up. Then you got closing costs, another 3%. So, you know, plus their loan balance. So I'm thinking if we can get this for about 180 around that range, it's probably be a good deal. I don't know if they would take an offer that low, but you see that's what they bought it for back here. They're probably gonna be insulted if we offer them 180, but it's an offer. You wanna sell it or you wanna keep paying that mortgage because we know they got a mortgage and they're paying the mortgage on a vacant house right now. We believe it's vacant, I don't know it's vacant. We know it's um, non-owner occupied. It could be somebody there 
renting it out. We don't know. So that's why we ask all those basic questions on the beginning when we speak to people, because we don't know anything. We just know what we see here. And we ask questions to try to validate and see and confirm that that information is accurate. So we see they had a loan from 2011 with U.S. Bank and the mortgage information here on PropStream. Um, we, we see the tax information here it shows us about $3,600 a year in taxes. Good night. That's some high taxes. And then this is uh, more information from the site to show when they transfer last, meaning they owned it since 2011. But uh, basically, that just gives you a basic overview. But this is somebody we might want to evaluate and make an offer on. We see they got equity in the property. We just don't know. It even tells you here. It's approximately $130,000 in equity. We know that's not really true because like I said, we have to account for the real estate agent. We have to account for the closing costs. And, uh, you know, we don't know how, no, how low they would go. But we know they have at least $100,000 in equity sitting up in this property. So they might take a lower offer and it might be a deal. We don't know. So, you know, we would contact these people and see if they want to sell their house still and, uh, you know, make them an offer. We would actually contact the agent, like I said. But this just gets us in the pipeline. So I'm not going to go into all of that because that's a whole other rabbit hole. I don't want to go down right now. So all of this stuff has processes, but we just want to know that they're motivated. And just by knowing that they're an out-of-state owner, knowing that they want to sell it because they got it listed on the MLS, and we know that it's been listed anytime between now and January, we know that, hey, this house may be uh, ready to go. So I could even change the filter to make it, let me see here. Let's see here, January 1st to July, 4th of July. That could even narrow it down. We don't have anybody that short. So that's why we left it at what he had it. So um, these are just active listings on the MLS, nine owner occupied. Basically, it's all this list is. If we wanted to reset this, we would just click reset and it'll clean all that off. And that's the end of that. Or you can push clear all up here to change that. That's going to give an overview of how to use uh, PropStream to find MLS active listings and uh, try to market to them and see if, uh, you know, you don't have to market. You really can just call straight to the agent. Many times the agent's information is straight on the property right there and you can see it. So um, let me see. Let me pull that back up. If we were to uh, go to the MLS listings and say we want to go to this property. MLS details, you should have the real estate agent's phone number down here at the bottom. And all we would ask them is, uh, is, the, is the house still available? And, uh, you know, and maybe their email so we can submit them an offer over. That's pretty much all we know. And any other information we can ask the real estate agent about the house. What's going on there? Why isn't it sold yet? You know, what's going on? That's what I would ask them if I was to speak to them. So hopefully that helps you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns about any of that stuff, we just went over here. comment below and we'll go or just ask me and we'll see if we can answer and that's going to stop this recording do what you do be who you be and i'll see you before you see me